What's up guys, Paramoto here. Something's missing you. God, here we go, get the coffee in the shop. What's up guys, Paramoto here. So today I need to start pricing out the 600 mile service I'm doing on a Yamaha MT-07. This is the most important service that you get done on any motorcycle. It actually affects the life and longevity of your motorcycle if you don't get it done. And it'll actually even affect the resale value of your motorcycle if you don't get it done. Well, off the rip, when I got this motorcycle, I got quoted $500 for the 600 mile service. I think that is the most ridiculous price I've ever heard of any motorcycle service. Even with my Ducati Panigale, I didn't spend $500 for a service. So for a service that's literally just pretty much an oil change and then just making sure all the bolts are tight, that seems a little steep. So I'm gonna call around today and see what kind of prices I can get. In the Raleigh area, there's a few main motorcycle dealerships. There is Capital Power Sports, which is where I bought the bike, is which where I got that $500 quote. There's Team Power Sports, which I'm not a fan of. Honestly, if um, I can get a good amount of money off, I'll be happy to go to them. Um, and then there's also a dealership up at Henderson that does Yamaha's as well. So I'm gonna call around today and see what kind of uh, quotes I can get. We are gonna start with Team Power Sports in Raleigh. We're calling Team Power Sports Raleigh. Hi, I was calling around trying to get quotes on a 600 mile service for a Yamaha MT-07. Sure. Um, if I remember correctly, on those bikes, they're basically just a checkup, oil change, and chain service. Um, yeah. That probably runs you around 340, 350 with us if you're doing synthetic oil. Um, so if you want to see me, just pick a day, show up early that day. I should be able to get you in now. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. No problem, buddy. All right, bye. 340 bucks, Team Power Sports in Raleigh. Next, Team Power Sports, Garner. It's a great day at Team Power Sports. Thank you for calling. Power Sports sales. This is John, how can I help you? Hey, I'm calling around trying to get a quote on a 600 mile service on a Yamaha MT-07. Yeah, let me get you over to service. Team Power Sports sales. This is John, how can I help you? Hey, I think you just redirected me to uh, service and I think it went to their machine. Oh, gotcha. They must be a little bit busy right now. Can I get a name and a number so they can give you a call back when they free up? Uh, I'll just call back later. So, they just lost my business. Really bad experience with Team Power Sports and Garner. It's a topic for another video, but um, they tried to charge me a crap load of money for a service on a CBR 600 and it was just, it was the worst experience I've ever had. So the next one up is Brewer Cycles. They actually called me I filled out an interest uh, sheet for a, uh, a Yamaha MT-07 from them and then they never called me back. So we'll see how this works. Thank you for calling Brewer Cycles. Hi, um, I'm trying to call around and get a quote on a 600 mile service on a Yamaha MT-07. All right, let me get you service. Hold on one second. Thank you. Whether you want to customize from speed and performance, looks, or outfit your bike with comb and other accessories, be sure to talk with our- You want to talk to me? Be sure to talk to our to about ideas to be your next this is my life. This is my life with this dog. Always in my business. And it's the best thing ever. Hi, um, I'm calling around looking for quotes on a 600 mile service on an MT-07. MT-07? Yes, sir. Yeah, just the first service, sir. Okay. All right, let me check and see what it says and I'll call you back. All right, thank you. All right guys, so it is currently 9.12 in the morning. The motorcycle shop opens in about 15 minutes. And I'm gonna try to be one of the first ones in line over there so I can go get a service done on this bike so I can start driving it like a normal person. Not so much a normal person, but I can start riding it like the hooligan that I wanna be. So I called the shop a few days ago and they pretty much just told me first come first serve Get here early, they'll be able to get you in. This is a little bit later of a start than I really intended to. I wanted to get there, you know, at right about 9.30. It's about an hour drive, so we're not making it at 9.30. Sometimes I just give myself too much credit. Just like, oh yeah, you're gonna be able to wake up early and get over here. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I always give myself way too much credit in the whole waking up early on a day off thing. I set an alarm for like 7.30, didn't get up till past 8. Started gearing up, gearing up took forever. I have a literal crap ton of uh, layers on right now. I have like two pairs of everything on because it is right now, like says it's 57 degrees, but the weather said it was about 50 out. So 50 degrees out in about an hour ride, it's gonna be chilly. I can't wait to be able to actually like rev this bike up and accelerate. This whole like keeping it underneath five grand just sucks. Like the bike's got plenty of balls underneath five grand, but I want to rev it more. We've been doing like non-existent road work on this road. Like they just like shut it down. You come out here afterwards, there's really no signs of any road work being done. Story of road stuff is just, they're always working on it. Nothing ever really gets done. Tell you what, it is chilly out here. My favorite thing to do though is wear this rain gear. This rain gear is like the perfect windbreaker for cold days. Like it, it has no thermal properties whatsoever, but it breaks the wind so well. It's just, I don't feel any wind on my chest right now a little bit getting in through the sleeves but other than that dude it's actually not terrible i'm going about 65 right now my bike is saying it's 57 degrees so you know it's cold out here you know we got plenty of northerners on here just like oh that ain't cold i'd kill for a 50 degree day but to me it's cold dude i live in the south man anything under 65 is cold for me we are going to try to get over there hopefully in the next 45 minutes to get this bike serviced I'm gonna chime in when we get a little bit closer. You guys have seen this road about a thousand times, so you probably don't wanna see it again. All right, guys, so we got the first service done. We made it to Team Power Sports in Raleigh. Um, there was one person in front of us, so I ended up getting the bike in real quick. Um, it took about an hour for it to get its service done. Um, unfortunately, I didn't um, vlog too much on the way there because we were just in such a rush trying to get there before anybody else got there. After we got there, several people walked in. Um, and I just, I wanted to beat them so I wouldn't, you know, get screwed out of the service. Yeah, so I came out and it started raining. As you can see, the bike's a little bit wet. So I've been out doing a couple things, waiting for the rain to stop. It looks like generally the rain has stopped. So we're going to give this vlog a, a good old fashioned college try again. The cameras can deal with rain, but they can't deal with a lot of rain. They, they can get drizzled on, they can get a little misted, but like if it starts raining and raining, like they can't handle that. Not with the way that they're set up. Now with like the housings that are on them and stuff like that. I kind of wish I had like a fully waterproof setup, but I just don't. Not like plugging mics in and shit to them. Like there's just nothing I can do about it. It's such like an unfortunate thing. Like I get the service done and I can finally unlock the rest of the power of this bike, but now I can't because it's raining and it's slick out. And then they got this person over here that's like late for work or something. I don't know what he's doing. We're driving like a dickhead. I don't want to be too much like a double moto, but we're going to go get some coffee and I'm going to talk about this service. I haven't been over in this area in forever. This is Briar Creek in Raleigh. Last time I was here, I was probably in this building straight ahead, signing the paperwork on my house. What a terrible mistake buying that house was. I had the absolute worst financial agent on that too. Hmm. Weird. I rev bombed and the bike died. That's the second time that that has happened. I don't understand that. Yeah, so we had like the worst financial agent I've ever seen. Like she came highly rated and I think since the time that she was good to the time that we used her, she developed some sort of drinking or drug problem because she was like the worst human being I've ever seen in her job. Literally everything she said was wrong. Every little thing she said was completely wrong. She was so bad at her job, I had to leave our like closing date to go get another check for more money because she did the math wrong. And your U-turn, that was a quick ass U-turn, man. Good for you. It's already drying up quick though. I mean, there's already tire marks on the ground. I haven't brought you guys over this area in a long time. This is 70 in Raleigh. It actually goes all the way to the beach if you follow it. We might have to do one day. Man, it's so nice to finally not have like restrictions. Like, oh, keep that bike underneath 5,000 RPMs or you'll ruin your engine. Now I'm like really glad that I wore this rain jacket. Now that it's raining out, got the screen protector on here. I need to go over my very first mods for this bike. I can show you guys everything that I've done so far. 
to get it to where it's at now. The MT-07 must do first mods or something. That's probably what the video will be called. Power Sports has always been good to me over here. Like their service department, if you're in Raleigh, has always been good. I'm not a big fan of their sales department. They've kind of tried to screw me a couple different times, but service has always been spot on. They've always made time for me. Their prices aren't ridiculous. They're not the greatest, but they're not ridiculous either. I highly recommend them. If you're in Raleigh and you need a bike service and you're in the US 70 area, man, I highly recommend Team Power Sports in Raleigh. Well, let's try here. It's a big place, a lot of bikes. They do a lot of Royal Enfields, and I gotta be honest with you, I sat on one. I didn't really, I wasn't really super, uh, I wasn't super impressed with the Royal Enfields. They feel very cheap to me. Everything about them just kind of screams cheap. Like they feel cheap, the paint looks cheap. They're not really comfortable. They had a weird angle to the bars and stuff. I, I don't know. I don't understand the whole whole Royal Enfield thing. We're starting to get some more rain here. I had to cut it off until we can get to uh, get to the coffee place. I'm gonna drown my camera. I just spent 300 bucks. I don't wanna spend another 300, 400 bucks on getting a new camera. Yeah, it's raining good, dudes. Raining good. Man, weather people suck, dude. They weren't calling for rain until later on today. What are you gonna do? It's like 60 degrees in February, so it kinda is what it is. Turn off to the next place, take these cameras off. Many of the shit people are like, oh yeah, this guy's coming over here. He can't afford a car. You're right, I can't afford a car right now. I'm not at $60,000, $70,000 a truck. So what's up guys, Paramoto here, trying to stay a little bit dry, stay out of the rain here for a second. I stopped here at my local super not corporate establishment to get coffee and we're going to talk about the service intervals on this uh mt07 bikes out here getting wet for the first time been a car alarm going off the entire time we've been here but this hotel right here right there when i used to work ems went to a double homicide there it's a super nice area over here i'm going through the pockets of this rain jacket for the first time in probably two years and i just find money and a charging cable this is what we came here to talk about. Service interval. Um, so really the only thing that is listed here is the initial service, $290, um, $50 of parts. That's like oil and filter and stuff. And the rest of it is literally just, that's it. It's oil, gasket, filter. Literally all that's listed here. So they also go around, adjust the chain, check all the fluids, and just pretty much just make sure everything's tight. Kind of seems like a rip off it man that's the first service i'm just gonna enjoy my coffee and then make the wet ride home what's up guys so future paramoto here so um i wanted to chime in and share a couple more thoughts with you we got a little bit rained out at the end of that last motor vlog here and i i felt like i kind of left a couple things unsaid so is the first 600 mile service worth it for you to do at a dealership versus doing it yourself. Honestly, it's gonna be completely up to you in your situation. For me, it's worth it to have the peace of mind that if I resell my motorcycle, my motorcycle will resell for the appropriate value because some people might look at it and be like, hey, this motorcycle wasn't serviced appropriately and if the motorcycle wasn't serviced appropriately, then it's not worth the same as another motorcycle that you can prove was. So I think it's above all, if you're gonna do any service at a dealership, do the first one at the dealership. Um, I could not find what they actually do during the 600 mile service until I came home and actually looked through my paperwork. I couldn't find it online because AT&T is down and I have AT&T. I wanted to go through with you guys what is actually entailed during the first 600 mile service. So first and foremost, looking at everything, it's essentially just a checklist. Um, they check your lights, they check your brake light switches, they, they do a diagnostic scan where they make sure that there's no engine or uh, service codes, they check your throttle controls, they check and replace your engine oil, they check your air cleaner, they check your th throttle valve sink, um, they check your brakes, they check your brake pads and shoes for uneven wear, they check your brake fluid, they check your chain, they adjust it, they lube it, they check your clutch, the exhaust system, they make sure your side stand, kill switch is working, they check your steering head bearings, and that's it. That's it. And then the rest of this service is literally pound foot, torquage, and everything like that. Um, could you do the 600 mile service at your own house? Yes, 100%. Is it worth it for you to do it? It's completely up to you. So essentially what the 600 mile service is, is them checking that they already put the bike together appropriately. To be honest with you, I don't think it's fair that they charge us 300 some odd dollars on top of the assembly fees that we already paid when we purchased the bike 
just for them to make sure that they put the bike together correctly. I don't think that's fair. I think that's something that needs to change in the motorcycle industry as a whole, but right now we're just kind of stuck with it. It's completely up to you. If you think that this is worth it to you to get the 600 mile service done at a dealership versus on your own, you can definitely do it on your own. Positives is that you can definitely save a ton of money doing it, but the negatives is, like I've already said, your bike might not be worth the same as another bike sitting right next to it just because they can prove that they got the most important service done and you didn't. So really that's the end of the video. I'm sorry that the motor log got a little bit rained out, but it is what it is, uh, especially this time of year. Um, I'm still trying to bring you guys the highest quality content I can possibly make and more videos are coming this way. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Deuces.